Thanks for joining us. I'm Scott Smith. And I'm Nicole Perbino. On Park Update this week, the Metropolitan Council released two draft reports that affect the proposed Southwest Light Rail Line. And Hennepin County was awarded a $750,000 grant from the McKnight Foundation to implement a pilot program for two Southwest LRT station areas. You still have time to enter the Operation Rescue Room contest and win $1,000. These stories and more just ahead on the update. January 30th, the Metropolitan Council released two draft reports prepared by independent consultants to examine important issues that affect the proposed Southwest Light Rail Line serving the communities of Minneapolis, St. Louis Park, Hopkins, Minnetonka, and Eden Prairie. The draft report includes an independent study of the location of freight rail service and an independent analysis of potential impact on water resources with light rail operating in shallow tunnels along the Kenilworth Corridor. Consultants will present the draft reports at several public meetings, including a St. Louis Park Town Hall community meeting on Wednesday, February 12th from 6 to 9.30 p.m. at the St. Louis Park Senior High School. The meeting will include opportunities for public testimony. The drafts are available for viewing and downloading at swlrt.org. More information on meeting dates, times, locations, and public comment may also be found at swlrt.org. Hennepin County, as part of a collaborative with the Neighborhood Development Center and the Metropolitan Economic Development Association, was awarded a $750,000 Moving the Market grant from the McKnight Foundation to implement an employment transit-oriented development pilot program. The pilot will look at two, as yet unnamed, Southwest LRT station areas to connect transit, jobs, and workforce development. The plan is to take auto-oriented job centers and turn them into pedestrian and bike-friendly places, allowing employees easier access to restaurants, grocery stores, and other amenities in the area. The goal will be to identify strategies and enhance and retain employment opportunities along the transit corridor, as well as expand the potential for minority-owned businesses along the corridor. The St. Louis Park Fire Department held its annual meeting on January 28th at Fire Station 1. Fire Chief Steve Coring invited department members and their families to attend as staff were honored for their exemplary performance. The Medal of Valor is awarded to Firefighter Eric Bakken, Meritorious Service Awards to Captain Paul Rosholt, Lieutenant Dan Yakel, and Firefighter Tim Smith. The Chief's commendation to Lieutenant Matt Nordby, Lieutenant Sean Gloppa, Firefighters Mike Lindblom, Tony Hansen, Phil Robinson, Tom Buda, Andy Shapo, Bob Hampton, Keith Heinzen, John Meary, and Nancy Schmelzley. The Unit Citation Award to Captain Mark Nelson, Lieutenant Eva Hansen, Lieutenant Matt Nordby, Lieutenant Dan Yakel, Firefighters Jens Anderson, Bob Hampton, Jason Saba, and Andy Willingbring. The Excellence in Customer Service Award went to Lieutenant Matt Nordby and Firefighter Jason Saba. Congratulations and well done. The Minnesota Recreation and Park Association presented George Hageman, Park and Recreation Advisory Commission member, a Park and Recreation Board and Commission Award for his volunteer efforts at their January 15th meeting. Hageman has been a member of the Parks and Recreation Advisory Commission since 2006. George is on the Board of Directors for the Friends of the Arts organization in the City of St. Louis Park. He sits on the Arts and Culture Grant Review process, along with city staff and community members. He served on the City Trail and Sidewalk Task Force, assisting staff in developing a plan, as well as helping other residents to understand the need for pedestrian and bicycle safety. Many thanks to George Hageman. City engineering staff will hold multiple second round public meetings for Connect the Park in the coming weeks. Connect the Park is the city's 10-year plan to add additional sidewalks, trails, bike lanes, and bikeways throughout the community. The meetings are as follows. 39th Street proposed sidewalk meeting on Wednesday, February 12th from 6 to 7.30 p.m. in the Rec Center Banquet Room. 41st Street and Morningside Avenue sidewalks meeting on Thursday, February 13th from 6 to 7.30 in the City Hall Council Chambers. At the meeting, staff will provide project updates and residents will have the opportunity to review and comment on the draft final design for the proposed project. Health in the Park is in need of volunteers, including community forum volunteers, phone bank callers, and flyer distributors. 
to volunteer, contact Laura Ingebrigtsen at 952-928-2847 or via email at lingebrigtsen at stlouispark.org. The HIP Citywide Conversations are coming up on February 20th and March 2nd. Sign up by calling 952-928-2858 or register online at hipslp.org. Free childcare and transportation are available upon request. Well, the city has multiple part-time and seasonal job opportunities available to apply for at this time. Some of the opportunities include rec center attendant, rec center maintenance, splash pad facility attendant playground leader and preschool playground instructor. You may view the full job descriptions, application deadlines, and apply online at stlouispark.org forward slash employment dot html. You still have time to enter the Operation Rescue Room contest. If you think your home has the cruddiest kitchen or the baddest bathroom, you could win $1,000 towards your remodeling project. To enter, go to homeremodelingfair.com, then attend the Home Remodeling Fair on February 23rd at the Eisenhower Community Center in Hopkins. Your greatest homegrown could be worth a grand. Well, in January of 2013, Community Energy Services became Home Energy Squad Enhanced. Under this new name, 177 St. Louis Park households participated in the program in 2013. This participation saved an impressive 112,391 kilowatt hours equivalent to the annual greenhouse gas emissions from 16.5 passenger vehicles, resulting in residents saving $27,752 on electric bills. On average, St. Louis Park residents who participated in the program saved $100 on utility bills. If you're interested in scheduling an appointment or learning more about the program, visit mncee.org forward slash HES dash SLP, that's a mouthful, or you may contact Participant Services Coordinator Beth Greeninger at bgreeninger at mncee.org. Or finally, you may call 651-335-5874, which would probably be the easiest. Just ahead, Nicole has events for the young and young at heart on Generation. In senior news, get exercise this winter by playing pickleball in the Lennox Gym. This popular game is a cross between tennis and badminton. Meet your peers for a play date Wednesdays and Fridays, 12.30 to 4 p.m. and Friday evenings, 6 to 8.30, except for the first Friday evening of the month. For more information and to register, call 952-928-6444. Did you know that 54% of people place a high value on promoting equality and reducing hunger and poverty? Work together on a food drive through your congregation or a community group. Discuss with young people situations that seem unfair and actions that you can take to make a difference. Children First, asset number 27, equality and social justice. Young person places high value on promoting equality and reducing hunger and poverty. Up next, Scott has the City Council update. In Council News, City Council honored St. Louis Park resident and business owner Susan Schneck at the February 3rd meeting. Schneck will be stepping down this month as the president of Friends of the Arts. In 1995, Schneck, along with others, turned their passion for art into the creation of Friends of the Arts. Schneck is a visionary, a creator, and has a passion for art, which helps bring many forms of art into the city through Friends of the Arts. We have, I mean, almost everyone here has been part of that and it's, it's just an incredible thing. I'm truly honored and I thank everyone for helping this create really a firm foundation for the arts as an integral part of the life in St. Louis Park. Thanks. Thank you. Susan was honored because of her countless hours of giving by volunteering and supporting the community so selflessly through Friends of the Arts. FOTA created the Our Town program, which includes Faces and Places and Voices and Verses, which helped art grow in the community and become a prominent addition to various projects. Up next, Misty Lewis is here with the sports break. The two St. Louis Park Crosstown rivals squared off at the Haven Center last Thursday. The Red Knight boys and the Orioles traveled the court to the halftime buzzer with Park up by a basket. The Orioles began the second half strong, but the Red Knight defense wore down the Orange and Black, slowly building an insurmountable lead. Park TV's Bruce Hoberman and Phil Burke called the play-by-play. 
Well, I think one of the keys here is to see as St. Louis Park tires a little bit. Are they going to be able to move as fast as they did in that first half? And uh, it's interesting as Chose has been on the sidelines for a little bit here. Yeah. Couple free throws by Whitlock. And again, the Orioles don't have a field goal here in the second half, but they have a bunch of free throws. Chose off the front of the iron. And I think uh, St. Louis Park just wants to get on a bus Curry now. Curry has improved the record to 11-5 for the season. Their next game is Thursday. Really a tale of two halves, and, and uh, St. Louis Park in the first half played, played a outstanding basketball the game and then uh, you know the second half the Red Knights just showed their strength and uh, speed and really dominated in the second half. The girls wrapped up their regular season on the road dropping their final game 7-1 to one against Spring Lake Park. Sections kick off at Parade Stadium on Wednesday with the Orioles facing Holy Angels. Park TV has the action. A little two on two here with the Basil sisters. A little drop pass to Molly. A little, oh, and yeah. beautifully done. Yeah. An yeah, excellent so work on the power play yeah. there. Yeah. Oh, the Orioles get a great. They get a great. shot from Jermusic from the point. Skippity, skippity, scop, yeah. and it goes right up the clock yeah. tower and yes. all the way down and behind her. And to get a shorthanded <laughs> goal with 28 yeah, seconds I left. Now <laughs> uh, we got to be very careful with what uh, lineup. Uh, they're going to bring out their top line to rebound, so we'll see what Coach Donnie, if he adjusts to that, because here comes their top line to uh, uh, Bianchi and the crew. Oh, out front. Oh. oh. <laughs> Still six seconds. We'll see if Park can take it away in a wise play on the backside there. And indeed, that's going to ride the game out. Stars, Park had a few good chances at the end that time. But unfortunately for them, nothing's going to materialize. And Holy Angels is going to. Holy Angels is going to walk out of here yeah. with a 3-2 win and a game that could have gone either direction. The BSM girls hockey squad will see section action on Saturday the 8th at Parade. That just park up fake sports break. I'm Misty Lewis. <laughs>for this week's park update thank you for watching now be sure you take some time to get out there and experience life in the park The City of St. Louis Park is asking residents to voluntarily restrict on-street parking to the odd side of the street through the remainder of the winter season. So firefighters, police officers, bus drivers, plow drivers and other large vehicle operators will be able to more easily navigate streets. The large amount of snow received this season has made many of the city's streets impassable for large vehicles when cars are parked on both sides of the streets. Complying with these voluntary restrictions will help protect residents in case of an emergency. If public safety vehicles are unable to navigate a street because it's obstructed by cars on both sides, response times could be impacted. For questions about the voluntary restrictions, please contact the St. Louis Park Fire Department at 952-924-2595 or you may visit the city's website, stlouispark.org.